Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part three and the final part of my Disable Printing series. If you want to know how to disable the print options so you can still let someone preview a report but not print it, well, go start with part one, then watch part two, and the, today is part three. In part one, we turned off the Control P, so you can't press Control P to print. In part two, we disabled the right-click menu. And in the extended cut, I showed you how to only disable the right-click menu in specific objects like specific reports. Today, we're going to cover the most pesky of the options, which is that print preview ribbon tab. All right, so we're in our database. Go to your customer form, go to orders, go to the invoice. All right, now we've getting rid of the control P. All right, can't use that. We can't right click. This is something that we did in the extended cut, right? I just showed you guys how to uh, completely disable it, but in the extended cut, we made this little guy. So if you right click on it, it just says use the print button on the invoice form, which will put a little button over here. Okay, but we still got this. Even if we turn off all the, 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 the menuing stuff, you still get this. So how do we get rid of it? Well, the only way to get rid of this is to replace it with a custom ribbon. Okay, now there's a lot of different steps you can do. I cover customizing the ribbon in my Access Developer Level 44 class. It's pretty in-depth, but what I'm going to show you today real simply is how to create a blank ribbon and replace the print preview ribbon with that. All right, it's not that hard. Let's see how to do it. All right, close whatever objects you got open. You can leave the main, main menu open. That's fine. The first step is to create a table to hold all of our ribbon data. That's gonna be a system table. All right, so go to create, table design. You're gonna put these three fields in it, right? ID by itself, that's gonna be your auto number. Okay, ribbon name, no space, short text, that's the name of the ribbon. And then ribbon XML, and that's a long text field. That's it, just those three things. I believe you can add more but you have to have those three fields. I don't really know why you'd want to add more, but okay. All right, save this as, you ready for it? U, sys, ribbons. Just like that. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. All right, there's your fields, and that's the name of it. U, sys, ribbons. And I'm not sure, but I think the sys has to be capitalized. Usually, it doesn't matter. Some things do matter because the, um, the ribbon stuff, is some of it is case sensitive. I don't think this is though. Use sys ribbons. All right, primary key defined. You say yes, and there you go. There's your table, and there's your data, or your your fields. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna put some data in here. Go over to, uh, to data sheet view. Okay. We're gonna open this up like this. Make it nice and big. Make this nice and tall. You'll see why in a second. Okay. The ribbon name is going to be print preview. No spaces, okay? That's what you're gonna put in the ribbon XML field. Again, I'll zoom in for you so you can see it better. Let's see, here's my zoom, all right. Okay, um, gold members, you can copy it out of my database if you want to. Everybody else, get typing. <laughs> and if you watch my video on how to do uh, OCR screen capture, you can do it with Google now. You can just do a screen capture of that and just drop it into Google as an image and it will OCR the text for you, but that's it. What is this saying? Well, this says we're gonna create a new ribbon. Okay, it's just telling you what the XML stuff is. Don't worry about it. It's just don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> and this says, give me a new ribbon and start from scratch. Now, normally in here, you'd have other commands. You'd have, you'd have groups and, and controls and labels and drop down boxes and all kinds of stuff. But this is just saying, we're gonna start a new ribbon from scratch. That's what true is. All right, which gives you a blank new ribbon, but it's got no controls in it. So it's gonna basically be a blank empty ribbon. Okay, makes sense? Okay, that's the, the simplest blank ribbon. All right, save that, close it. Now what you're gonna do at this point is you have to restart your database. So shut it down and restart it because Access only reads that ribbon table when it loads the first time. So if you make any changes to it, you've got to shut down and restart access, which I think is a pain, but you got to do what you got to do. 
Now, when the database is back open, notice you're not going to see your table. Why? Because it's a system table. Normally, system tables don't show up in here. So right click up here, go to navigation options, and you can turn on show system objects. All right, there's a whole bunch of M sys. Don't touch this stuff. Don't touch it. But look, there's use sys ribbons. So if you have to get back in here to modify it, there it is, right? But I'm going to leave this stuff off because it just clutters things. I don't like to look at it all the time. Okay, there's hidden objects and there's system objects. I usually you leave hidden objects on because I like to see sometimes if I hide stuff, you know, then I go try to find it later. I'm like, where did I put it? But I don't need to see the system object. So there, okay. But it's in there and Access now has loaded up that custom ribbon called Print Preview. But we still have to assign it to the report. Okay, see this guy still comes up. So what you're gonna do is, oh, I can't even right click on this because I turned off the right click menus. Okay, all right. <laughs> We got to come in through the navigation pane, right click, design view, open up the properties for the report, come over here to other and find ribbon name, drop that down and there's print preview. Okay, save it, close it, close it, close it. All right, open it back up again. And now there you go. The print preview ribbon is now hidden. Now, we're still not out of the woods just yet. Even though we turned off the custom ribbon just for this guy, the user can still go to one more place to print this thing. And that's file, print, and it's right there. So we have to turn that off too. Okay, now this is a special part of the ribbon called the backstage. It's under file. And what we can do is we can modify the backstage by taking print off of here. But unfortunately, this is gonna be for the entire database. But like I said, there's other ways that you can give your user the ability to print. But in order to turn that off, it's gotta be at the database level. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we have to make one more modification to our custom ribbon. So let's turn back on the system objects. All right, go back into your use sys ribbons. We're gonna make another ribbon in here. We're gonna call it backstage. All right, let me give you the code for it. Let me copy it. I got it on my clipboard here. I had to play with this for a while to get it working. There it is. All right, there it is right there. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. Very similar to the other one. All right, you got the custom UI, all this stuff here. We got ribbon start from scratch is false for this one because we want to use the rest of what's on the file backstage. Okay, but we just want to modify this guy. Okay. ID MSO tab print means I want to make the print tab invisible. That's what this does. Okay. Hit okay. Uh, there's our second. We got a second custom ribbon in here now, right? All right. Close this. Close down the database because it has to reload it again, right? Open her up. Okay. Now you're still going to see it under file print because we haven't assigned it yet. So go to options current database, scroll down, and this thing right here, ribbon name. Drop that down and pick your backstage ribbon now. Okay, hit okay. Restart the database again. And now this time when it opens up, now you will see file, no print. Ooh, ah, look at that. So now, We've got our form, our, our report right here, okay? No ribbon print preview tab, no option for file print, okay? And no control P and no right click. So now the only way the user is gonna print this is if they screenshot it. They can literally zoom in and use a screen capture tool. That's it, they cannot print this any way that I know of, unless I'm missing something. I've been doing this forever. This is the only four ways I can think of to print this. So what you need to do now is make them their own print button here. So after they preview it, click on this one and then it will print it. And that's it. Now, of course, of course, the quick access toolbar across the top, right? You want to turn that off too, but that's easy. Okay, there you go. So there's your three part series.
how to disable printing. We've disabled it from the keyboard. We've disabled it from the right click shortcut menu. We disabled it from the ribbon. And also part of the ribbon is the backstage, the file print. So there's four, four different ways that you can print something. Oh, there you go. That was my day putting all that together. <laughs> like I said, this ribbon stuff is not easy, but I go over it in a lot more detail from the ground up. I All that stuff that I just said, here's the code, don't worry about it. Well, I explain it fully in my developer course so you understand what it all is. And I'll, you know, we go through the XML and what each of these objects are. So check that out if you want to learn more about customizing the ribbon, customizing the backstage view, customizing the right-click pop-up menus, all that stuff. And again, if you want to learn more about securing your database so you can control what users can do what in the database, we do user logons, we set up groups, we create a system log, I show you how to encrypt the database, all that stuff. That's all covered in my security seminar. But there you go. That is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really wanna learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. 
I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.